here's Best Buy, and we're doing our stock in focus. And I always like to kind of do these because, you know, I think I, I learn a lot or uh, it helps reinforce sometimes, you know, how I look at this uh, a lot of times, the price action on these. But, you know, a real great uh, winner today was, uh, you know, a big percentage gainer was the Best Buy company. And, you know, I think it's always, in, although it's a, you know, n nice company, you know, nothing personal, uh, I really don't. I'm not big again. I don't like to get into the whole let's analyze what the co company can do. And I'm not trying to, you know, I know there's a lot of people that are very accurate and very good with those kind of things. But to me, it's very, very hard for the average person to really know what's going on with Best Buy. Who's the who's the chief executives? How do they interact? How well are they? You know how great are they with the books? Um, there, you know how do they innovate? All of these things. Their competition. How does that? How is, are that going to be affected? You know, okay, they had bad earnings. Why was that going to? Is that going to change? And and um, you know, even when it does, is that substantial? Is it going to really turn around? There's so many things, and then you had, you had the competition involved, and you got to know their competition. And those people, so it's very, very tough if you're not in the industry to really get a good feel for that kind of thing. So to me, this is why I love technical analysis so much, because you don't really have to know any of those things to really know that and, and see what the stock has been doing over the last couple of years. I mean, for example, you know, I, I mean, uh, I don't know many people that can say, you know, during this time, what was the CEO of this company at this time? But we can say with certainty is that as prices started to kind of come up, you could see them break back under the 100-day moving average here after they had two failed attempts at this higher range near the 60 range. And then you could see it fail, breaking through the lows. And that's a bad thing because if it's important and it's got support, it should hold it. But you could see it hold it for the short term. Um, you know, it rallies back, but eventually breaks those important lows. And then you start to see it just not able to rally any higher. What does it do? It goes in a pretty much of a predictable trend line for a little while. It tries to rally, but it breaks back down lower, tries to rally, can't go past this 100-day moving average. What do you see? A very, very big corrective move. That was along with the banking collapse. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of clean that up. And let's say, okay, now from the banking collapse, let's see what happens. Now we know that it was in a very bearish mood, a very bearish tone. So it's, but it was oversold because it just made complete sense that it was oversold. You could see it very big free fall. You could see even with the pattern here, you could see even a quick ABC, I mean, one, two, three, four, five wave on it. And you could, then you could see it kind of run back in here and try to make this move back. And you could see it really starting to create these higher bottoms as it's doing that. Okay, you have one break right here, and that's your initial warning here. You have see a break of that range. Now what happens? Failure can't break higher. Now if you remember the past, and that's always important, here is our important highs. Remember the last time before we saw this very big... Cur